Madam President, I'd like to uh, talk for a few moments about, uh, and then I'm going to have a, a motion, about uh, the impeachment of Secretary Mayorkas. Um, as you know, Madam President, our, our, uh, our government is one of laws, not people. Laws, not people. And as you also know, Madam President, the United States Senate is built on precedent and custom and history and the law, not political expedience. We in the Senate are supposed to listen to the American people, not ignore them. And we, one of the ways we do that, Madam President, is by playing by the rules that we have all agreed to. All of the rules. All of the time. Now, my Senate Democratic colleagues today, or at least very shortly, however, may be willing to jeopardize centuries of this stability, the stability that this body uh, has, has brought and lives by for short-term political advantage. We all know what's going on here. We all know exactly what's going on here. For the very first time in our nation's history, my Senate Democratic colleagues are seeking to table, maybe even dismiss, an impeachment by the United States House of Representatives of a sitting cabinet official without holding a full trial. If my Senate colleagues do that, they will be summoning spirits that they won't be able to control. Let me say it again, Madam President. The United States House of Representatives. We're not talking here about some uh, snow bro who lives off chicken McNuggets and weed and happens to have an opinion. The United States House of Representatives, elected by all of the American people, spent months investigating our border policy, and Secretary Marcus's role in it. And then they thoughtfully crafted and they passed with the majority vote two articles of impeachment. And now my Senate Democratic colleagues want to toss them out in the trash like a weak old tuna salad sandwich without hearing from either side. In the more than two centuries that this body has existed, we have never once tabled an impeachment. Not once. The Senate has never dismissed impeachment articles under these circumstances either. Neither tabled nor dismissed. If the Senate dismisses these charges without a full trial, it will be the first time in the Senate's long history that it has dismissed impeachment charges against an official it has jurisdiction over without the official first resigning, and that's just a fact of history. The Senate has the responsibility to hold this trial, and everybody in this body knows it. Yet my Senate Democratic colleagues seem willing to forfeit our constitutional authority in order to bury the evidence of how bad the border crisis is. Now, I, for one, want to hear the House's evidence. And Senate Republicans are offering our colleagues across the aisle, all, all of whom I respect, by the way, a menu of options for how to hear that evidence and listen to Secretary Mayorkas' defense without eroding Democratic institutions. If Democrats set a new precedent by making an impeachment trial impossible as I'm afraid they're going to try to do. They will be silencing the voices of the Americans who elected them 
and they will have to own the decisions that they will be making and bear the consequences tomorrow. And tomorrow may come sooner than they can imagine. Apparently, my Democratic colleagues are, are really leaning in on their double standards. Whenever protecting democracy, have you heard them? Heard that expression? Or upholding, quote, the rule of law. Have you heard my Democratic colleagues talk about the rule of law? I have. I agree with them. Whenever they, they uh, use those expressions, but it becomes politically challenging, they seem happy to ignore the rule of law and the will of the people. And their political expedience is in full view today. I regret to say that. Um, we'll see what my Democratic colleagues do with respect to my resolution and Senator Lee's resolution. Uh, Senator, Senate Democrats, I'm afraid, are silencing the American people who want their country's secure border back. And the truth is that the American people are tired of the drug trafficking, they're tired of the human trafficking, they're tired of the sexual abuse of women and children, they're tired of the widespread illnesses, they're tired of the death, they're tired of the behavior of President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas with respect to the border, they're tired of the chaos, they believe it's chaotic by design, and they believe it is undermining their national security. And they're right. Now, the American people may be poorer under President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas, but they're not stupid. They're not stupid. In total, more than 9 million people, foreign nationals, have, acro have crossed the southern border under President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas. Nine million! That's four Nebraskas. And Secretary Mayorkas doesn't have any idea who they are. He doesn't have any idea where they are. Customs and Border Protections also see, seized 53,000 pounds of fentanyl from 2001 to 2023. That's, that's enough to kill every man, woman, and child on this planet, for God's sakes. Not the United States, this planet. The southern border is an open, bleeding wound. Now, the majority of the House of Representatives reached that conclusion. That's why they voted to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. And they have sent us their evidence. And that evidence alleges that Secretary Mayorkas' policies have made our, our immigration system septic. If I were Secretary Mayorkas, I would want to answer those allegations. As a senator, I want to hear the evidence. And I know the American people want to hear the evidence. These are serious charges, Madam President. By tabling or dismissing the articles of impeachment without so much as a trial. Like, like it was just spam in their, in their inbox. My Senate Democratic colleagues are endorsing the Biden administration's lawless approach to the southern border. They're setting a precedent that the next administration can ignore the laws of Congress and the will of the American people as long as it advances the majority party's agenda. That's what they're saying. Now, my resolution will give the procedures we need, set up the procedures we need to con conduct this trial fairly and efficiently. My resolution is modeled on the procedures that this body used during the, the second impeachment trial of President Trump. When President Trump's first impeachment came to the United States Senate, Senate Republicans were in the majority. You didn't see us trying to table that impeachment. You didn't see us trying to dismiss that impeachment because we believe in the rule of law all the time, not just when it's politically expedient. We heard the evidence. We did our job. 
And that's what we ought to do right now. The, 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 uh, the proceedings set forth in my resolution are efficient. They're fair. They're honest. They will not uproot the long-standing precedent that we, we have given to articles of impeachment in the past. It will give the articles of impeachment serious consideration, as we have always done. And here's my final point. If, Senate, if my Senate Democratic colleagues, let me say it again, each and every one of whom I respect, if they choose to ignore this impeachment, they will have placed their seal of approval on the lawlessness at the border and the chaos it has brought to so many American communities. And they will have ignored 200 years of Senate precedent. 200 years. A charitable interpretation based on policy does not exist for what my Democratic colleagues are going to try to do. It is all based on raw gut politics. And they know it, and I know it. And everybody in this room knows it. Please don't do it. Please, my friends, don't do it. Please don't allow the Senate to rot from within. The American people deserve better. I ask unanimous consent, Madam President, that the Committee on Rules and Administration be discharged from further consideration and the Senate now proceed to S. Res. 623, my resolution that I just talked about. Further, that the resolution be agreed to and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Madam President, reserving, the, majority the, right to, reserving the right to object. Madam President, the senator from Louisiana is my friend. We throw that term around here in the Senate, but it's, mean, it, it's true. I think he would say the same. We both serve on the Senate Judiciary Committee. <clears throat> we've worked on issues together. We've been adversaries, but we've done it respectfully, and I'll continue that, I hope, this day. But the gentleman, the senator from Louisiana, brings to the floor of the Senate and to this debate special qualities. He sounds many times like a homespun backwoods lawyer. Don't be fooled. He's a graduate of a famous university in England. I've forgotten which one. Oxford, Cambridge, one of those. It's, they're not in the Big Ten, I'm sure of that. But I know they're in England, and I congratulate you. I was never even considered for a university of that stature. He's a brilliant lawyer and senator and raises important questions, not just for the moment, but for history. The question before us today that he's raising is about the purported impeachment, I should say actual impeachment, of a member of President Biden's cabinet, Mr. Mayorkas, head of the Homeland Security Department. And that has now been, is about to be reported to the Senate and we have constitutional responsibilities when it is reported. In this situation, we are waiting for the actual report to arrive. I think it will be momentary, perhaps this week or next, and we will take up this matter as we are required to do. The House Homeland Committee engaged in a year-long investigation of Secretary Mayorkas and his alleged maladministration of the border of the United States. This committee in the House held 12 hearings, testimony from more than two dozen witnesses, producing nearly 400 pages of reports. The Senate, when sitting as a court of impeachment, is not responsible for making the case on behalf of the impeachment managers. We are the jury. We are the ones who will decide the impeachment. 
Our duty is to make the determination based on the articles of impeachment and the facts at hand. We are not a fact-finding operation. My friend from Utah is also on the, st on the floor. During the first Trump impeachment said, and I quote, the Senate here sitting as a court of impeachment has both the authority and the obligation to decline to hold a full trial where the material facts of the case are not in dispute, end of quote. The facts are not in dispute here. This is the first time that the House has successfully impeached a sitting cabinet level official without providing any evidence of a high crime or misdemeanor. None. All those hearings, all those pages, all those witnesses, no evidence of high crimes or misdemeanor. And that is a requirement of the Constitution. The articles of impeachment that will be before us contain zero evidence that Secretary Mayorkas has committed high crimes and misdemeanors. Instead, they can be read as a summary of Republican grievances with this administration's approach to border policy, immigration, detention, and methods of removal and parole, all of which is conduct that falls squarely within the executive branch's constitutional prerogatives. Fortunately, the Constitution was designed to prevent this type of partisan politics driving this effort from contaminating the extraordinary process of impeachment. The delegates to the Constitutional Convention considered and rejected the concept of maladministration as an impeachable offense, in part because they feared the misuse of impeachment for purely political retribution. The Constitution empowers the Senate to have the sole power to try all impeachments and to determine the rules of its proceedings but the Senate only has the power to convict, remove, and disqualify officers whose conduct meets the constitutional standard. That standard is well known to all members of Congress and the Senate particularly. Given that the Senate only has the power to convict, remove, and disqualify officers who, are committed, who have committed, quote, treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, end of quote, the appropriate Senate response to impeachment articles that do not articulate that change, those charges, is obvious. If congressional Republicans were genuinely interested in addressing concerns about our border, they should be willing to work on a bipartisan basis to pass legislation fixing our broken immigration system and give this president and Secretary Mayorkas the tools they've asked for to address the situation at the southern border. I want to make sure this is clear on the record. The border is broken. It needs to be fixed. What we should do and what we did do is to establish a bipartisan committee. The Republicans said we insist that James Lankford, a respected senator from the state of Oklahoma, speak for us and negotiate for us when it comes to changing the rules at the border. We agreed with that. Senators worked with Senator Lankford, whom I respect, and came up with a bipartisan proposal that gave new authority to the president and to the executive branch to deal with the crisis at the border. What happened on the Republican side of the aisle when James Langford, the Republican senator from Oklahoma, came up with this proposal? All but seven of them, I believe that was the number, walked away from him and said they wouldn't support it. Why did they do that? You know why they did it because Donald Trump announced that he wanted no part of any agreement, any bipartisan effort to solve the problem. And then former President Trump said, and blame me. Well, I am blaming him. We had an opportunity to actually do something on the floor of the Senate when it came to the border. He stopped it. And so many of the Republican senators who begged us to work with Senator Langford turned their backs on him after the yeoman effort he put into this undertaking. That's the reality. We had our chance on a bipartisan basis and still do to resolve this problem rather than engage in any political stunt. Instead, the vast majority of Republicans, including the junior senator from Utah and others on the floor, recently blocked a bipartisan border reform bill that was written by the Republicans' designated negotiator, Senator Langford. They had their chance. It didn't work. Neither will this. I object. The objection is heard. Madam the President. senator from Louisiana. 
I will respond briefly. The United States House of Representatives. The United States House of Representatives has found, after a lengthy investigation, that the chaos at the southern border is man-made. And the United States House of Representatives, Representatives has alleged that that man's name is Secretary Mayorkas. We need to hold a trial. Now, Senator Durbin is my good friend, and as usual, he is eloquent. And he sounds very confident that the evidence will exonerate Secretary Mayorkas. How does he know? He hasn't heard the evidence. And he doesn't want to hear the evidence because he's scared that the American people might disagree. That's what this is all about. Raw, gut politics.